the keys for all sex therapy is to help clients relax into their present moment experience. We're trying to make it something and actually just feel what it is to feel themselves and perhaps their connection with their partner. And so the first part of surrogate partner therapy is teaching relaxation and a surrender into touching objects. It's not even a person because then you don't worry. What does the rock think about the way I'm touching it? You can actually feel it. And for some people, that's eye-opening. And for some people, it's not. Each session is a small stretch from the previous session, gradually exposing the client to um, the opportunity to feel. There's a hand caress is often the next exercise where the surrogate partner touches the client's hands and focuses on the surrogate's own feelings, not giving a great hand massage, but actually feeling the skin and being conscious and present. I've had clients cry because they don't remember ever having been touched in a conscious way before, or it's been decades or since they were children, since they were nurtured in that way. The conscious attention, it's not to give them that experience, but it's to pay attention and people feel when you're actually present in the touch and then to give the client an opportunity to be active and touch the surrogate partner's hand to actually feel the sensation in their own skin and to keep their attention on themselves. Some people worry that this is selfish or that they'll do something harmful. So we make an agreement up front. I'll tell you if I need you to stop and please you tell me if something's not comfortable. I wouldn't want to do anything that you didn't want or that was hurtful to you. So we make a deal that we'll tell each other if it's not comfortable and I'm never mad and, um, or upset. And I don't get, take it personally. If somebody feels ticklish or it's too intimate or scary, I had one client, he was afraid it was aversive to all touch, all touch. He could shake hands and that was the only touch he had ever allowed since he was a little kid. And um, watching other people touch actually made him feel nauseous. So he had a m unusual condition of sort of touch aversion and um, is a useful case to think about because it's, it demonstrates how slow the process can be. We just sat across the room from each other and talked for a while until he was ready for me to move halfway towards him from my seat, bringing my chair forward. And I had a, a, a large enough office that I could even halfway was still like three or four feet away from him. And then as he was more comfortable, a session or two down the road, I was able to move another foot or two towards him and eventually to sit with my knees near his facing him and, um, and we're just talking about the weather and life and his feelings in the moment and helping him breathe and relax and be comfortable. And then uh, we, we did the objects exercise where he touched the objects and that was okay for him. Touching objects was not a problem, but the idea of any kind of human touch was um, so upsetting to him that first I just had him caress a towel put a pillow in his lap and touch the pillow and then touch a towel. And then eventually he allowed me to touch his hands through the towel. And then eventually he touched my hands through the towel. And then eventually he allowed the towel to be removed so we could be skin on skin. Many sessions, um, not necessarily what sex work looks like, and, but what therapy looks like, right? This gradual exposure to something that's scary in such safe ways that it no longer triggers the anxiety. And so in therapy language, we call that a successive approximation and desensitization, which just means we do it in teeny little steps so we get more comfy. And yeah, um, I would call it radical patience and love, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's very easy because we're together, partners, trying to figure out what's the next comfortable step. And it's got to be gentle. Clients shouldn't feel anxiety sort of above a halfway mark on any anxiety scale. It should be on the low end. And if it's not, we need to do a teeny bit less because practicing being uncomfortable is a terrible idea. We've been doing that our whole lives. We don't need more practice being uncomfortable. 
Um, and then, of course, I'm reporting to the therapist and he's reporting to the therapist. And the therapist is participating in the decisions about how to move forward and helping the client process what happened and think about it. So in a sense, because you can't learn a new language just practicing one hour a week, the time with the therapist is a way of reimagining it and integrating it and integrating it into a sense of self that isn't just inside my office. And then we eventually moved from hands to feet through socks and then eventually touching feet directly and eventually um, uh, touching the back from the shoulders to the belt line and eventually faces and hair. That was much more challenging for this particular client. Super easy for somebody else. If it's easy, we do it and enjoy it. If it's difficult, you know, we spend a little more time getting it comfy. And um, meanwhile, through this process, he's learning that he can trust me. And I'm learning that I can trust him. Um, he had did not have a goal of being sexual in the work. He had a goal of getting over his touch aversion. And we got up to the point where we disrobed to wearing just um, sort of the equivalent of bathing suits, you know, bras and panties and stuff like that and touched skin. And he said, great, I know how to do this. I know how to teach my partners how to go slow. I'm done. And we had a closure session in which, you know, we all celebrated and then he went and lived his life. <laughs>